So, Grace, I have a question for you because in the Cedar Fair chain, a lot of the other Cedar Fair parks have been implementing a shop of policy where, you know, people of a certain age need to be escorted around the park by adults. Is there anything you can speak of to the future of that? Alrighty, I've been hearing a lot of complaints about the audio in our interview with Grace and I just don't see it guys. I thought it was absolutely crisp audio that we had in that video and I could hear everything that we were discussing. Okay, we know that's BS. I am so sorry. I honestly do want to apologize that we had such a great opportunity um, to interview a park representative like Grace and we dropped the ball with our um, shot mic. So yes, we are investing in the mics that attach to your shirts um, for all future things. Um, we will make sure this never happens again. Like, and I truly mean that because I'm embarrassed. Like I am embarrassed. Like it sucks because this interview was packed with details. So I'm gonna make this video that will discuss everything that we talked about with the chaperone policy. And then I'm gonna give my opinions on it. Um, Cause why not? So basically, we asked Grace Peacock, uh, the Director of Communications for Canada's Wonderland, um, if the chaperone policy was coming to Canada's Wonderland. There are different formations of the chaperone policy, but the one that we most commonly saw was that basically anyone under the age of 16 uh, would require uh, a chaperone of 21 years or older, usually after 4 p.m., like we saw at Kings Island, I think, was the park after 4 p.m., um, or all day at some of the other parks. So, um, again, Canada's Wonderland is a really weird park for that to happen at, but um, it is a park that does technically need some sort of um, assistance in dealing with the rowdy teenagers. Basically, what she responded was that they don't know. Um but it's not a no and it's not a yes. Um, they're always exploring options to help with guest safety and the overall satisfaction of the guest experience at Canada's Wonderland. Um, so nothing was off the table um, and that they would have to see how things played out and that there are always conversations going on about what they can do um, to help with the, the rowdy experience or the rowdy teenagers. That is essentially the short version of the answer that she gave us. Um, and I will say that I was someone that was really confident that the chaperone policy would never come to Canada's Wonderland. And I'm going to commit to that because why not? If I make a prediction, I got to stick to it. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, I just personally don't see the chaperone policy working at Canada's Wonderland. And when I say working, um, I mean like business wise, it's not a smart decision. Uh, again, this is a park that has sold a lot of season passes and this is a park that has public transit that can get you to the park. It's a, it's a very easily accessible park located in the middle of the greater Toronto area um, or York region more specifically, and it is easily accessible. It has suburbs surrounding it. And yes, families let their teenagers come here. And yes, a lot of people misbehave at Wonderland. And I'm gonna use the word people. A lot of people misbehave at Canada's Wonderland. It's, we'll get into that in a second. But um, a lot of enthusiasts and a lot of people want a chaperone policy. So I find it kind of concerning and I'm a little worried about giving my opinion on the chaperone policy, but I want you guys to hear my side of the story and then take it into consideration when we talk about the, the chaperone policy. And I 100% invite you to also attack me and drag me in the comments down below with your opinions and your sides of the story as well. And let's have a debate. Like, let's make this a debate. I want to hear your guys' side of the story. And if I have to make a part two to this video to respond to some of them, I will. Because this is a tricky situation. I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm right. You guys are wrong. I'm going to sit here and be like, this is a tricky situation. Let's talk about it. Let's let's honestly discuss. So, full honesty, I just don't, I, I just don't see it. It would be a really bad thing business decision for Canada's Wonderland. It would definitely lose out on a lot of business. I know a lot of people disagree with me. One, they say, you know, the teenagers don't come with money. Well, I don't know. Have you been in the Starbucks at Canada's Wonderland? Have you seen the fast lane lines at Canada's Wonderland? Have you seen who's playing the games at Canada's Wonderland? Yeah, they may not come with the amount of money that we as adults come with, but they come with money. 
It's there. It helps with the average ticket at the park. It helps with the KPIs at the park. So again, I just, I think that Cedar Fair is going to hold off. Um, They might see how opening weekend goes. And if all goes well, they might not introduce it. Now I'm going to talk about quickly before I get into my opinions, why else I don't think um, Canada's one of them might announce it. So the other parks in the States have layouts where the kids areas are a little more in the general aspects of the park, the general layouts. So mixing of teenagers and kids and adults and young adults and all that is happening more frequently than at Canada's Wonderland where the kids have been kind of tucked away in the corner of the park at Canada's Wonderland for the most part. I'm not saying they're perfect, but it is definitely a lot more protected back there. In fact, so much so that even when I go back there to film new attractions, I feel awkward with my camera, rightfully so. Um, But That being said, they also have a really close relationship with York Regional Police. The police helicopters flown over the park here and there. The police force is in there. It's almost like for every three security guards, there is one police officer at Canada's Wonderland. So they are a lot better set up. They also have undercover security at Canada's Wonderland as well. Regular security guards in clothes. Um, And the teams at Canada's Wonderland, rides teams, entertainment teams, all the teams are trained um, with radios too uh, to watch out for things. So Wonderland is better set up than other parks. I know a lot of people might disagree with me there, but that is just my personal findings on the situation. And again, the comment section is open down below uh, for debate. So uh, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm right. This is a really difficult situation. I don't think there's any winning. I really don't. I don't think there's a winning side here. I think that no matter what, people are losing. Um, And that's what makes me sad. So let's get into my opinion. Um, I remember um, when I was younger, uh, I I believe, I always mix up the years, but I believe I was 14, 15 when my my dad passed. Um, And my family setting uh, was, was different. It was, it was it was unique, and I wouldn't say unique. Actually, a lot of people go through this, and this is the whole point of the video. But I didn't have anyone in my family that wanted to go to Wonderland with me anymore, and Wonderland became my place where I remembered my father. It also became my safe place. I had no friends, I didn't have anyone to talk to, uh, so I bust to Wonderland. I got a season pass. I believe my mom. I can't remember all the details, but I believe my mom bought me a season pass. She didn't want to go to Wonderland. She didn't do rides. She didn't like Wonderland. None of my siblings liked Wonderland. My siblings were obviously dealing with their own trauma of my dad dying, and they were all dating people, living their own lives, and my sister was too young, my younger sister. So I went alone at a young age, in the age that would have been affected by the chaperone policy. And I just remember how important Wonderland was to my mental health back then, like significantly important to my mental health back then. And that's the part that really hurts me. Like, thinking about that struggling young teenager back then not having that place to go to, and if the chaperone policy was introduced, not having anyone to take me. I wouldn't have, I really wouldn't have had anyone to take me. Um, And that scares me because I wonder what would have happened to that teenager struggling if I didn't have this safe place Uh, because it was really important to my mental health back then and that's just one situation there are teenagers that are struggling with things where their parents work multiple jobs just to get by nowadays and Wonderland is that only place close to home where you know they can go on weekends to escape or to, for something to do because their family can't afford, you know, vacations or those extra expensive things in Toronto. So a season pass for $99 with a meal plan for $125 and a drink plan for $34 loaded for the entire season from May to January 1st or December 31st is the most cheap, valuable option for that family to help entertain their child while they work two jobs. That is another aspect of this situation too. And I personally, and this is where I'm going to start offending people, and I'm not meaning to offend anyone. I, I mean that. I want you guys to think about the other side, okay? That's that's my whole point of this video. But I think it's a little selfish to think that it's okay for the better of our enjoyment, we punish an entire generation of kids 
for a lot of kids, we'll say a lot at Wonderland, misbehaving. But it's not actually that way. There are teenagers that misbehave at Canada's Wonderland. There are. But there are adults that misbehave at Canada's Wonderland. In fact, it's funny. Now that I pointed this out, I've been pointing it out to Surrey a lot. Yesterday we were at Wonderland. And there were probably these 28-year-olds throwing a basketball at the scenery at Canada's Wonderland. And just completely misbehaving. And they were drunk. They were drinking out in their car. The chaperone policy wouldn't affect those people. Just the teenagers. And yes, there are teenagers that fight, but I think the people that are most behaving at Canada's Wonderland are the 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds, which the chaperone policy would not affect. Those are the ones fighting at Halloween Haunt, the 19 year olds, the 18, 19 year olds. So I cannot sit here and willingly punish an entire generation when we don't have all the information correct. It is like, when people look at homeless people and they assume that if you give them money, they're just going to go get alcohol or they're just going to go buy smokes. That's not the case for everyone. Yeah, it may have been the case here and there, but it's not the case for everyone. So we just, you know, collectively as society don't help homeless people because a couple of them make the wrong decision. And then did we forget that as a human society, that as people, we don't always make the right decisions like, do we really punish people as a whole for that? I think the responsibility lies on Canada's Wonderland to implement a stricter kicking out policy. I think that more security should be hired. And from what I understand, more security has been hired. And maybe that's why the policy hasn't been announced yet. And maybe what I'm saying is actually what Wonderland's about to do. Like, I, I they didn't know fully and they didn't give us all the details. But what I would like to see is Canada's Wonderland remove guests for disorderly conduct and actually implement bans um, and remove guests in the moment, have more security, and punish them even with maybe the police force start pressing charges for uh, disorderly conduct. I think that would help greatly Sh set a president that misbehaving at Canada's Wonderland, filming on rides at Canada's Wonderland, is going to lead to your removal and possibly charges pressed against you. I think that would go a long way. And start tracking these people's like information so they can't buy a season pass and if they buy a ticket and come back again it's a win for wonderland they get more money and then they can kick them out later if they discover you know that it's the same guest that's banned um so uh, those are just some of my ideas um and again i know that i hold it personally i just i can't sit here and watch these teenagers get punished now i will say i will say 14 and younger I think there should be a chaperone policy in place. I think it's unsafe for a 14 younger and younger um, child to be at Canada's Wonderland alone without a chaperone. So that I 100% am for. Um, maybe even 15. I don't know. I can't really remember how mature a 15-year-old is. But I think I recall going to Wonderland at 15 alone um, a lot. So uh, again, it depends on the maturity. But I, I just think that you know, instead of holding the pitchforks and the flamethrowers at these these teenagers and wanting the chaperone policy, we can think of better alternatives and stop excluding everyone over every little mistake. Like, I just, I, I, I hate it. I hate how we always just exclusion, 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 and hate, 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 hate. Like, not everyone's bad. There are bad people out there, but not everyone's bad. Um... But yeah, that's my two cents. Comment down below, guys. I honestly want to hear from you guys. Let's debate. Let's debate. Be respectful, though. I'm not going to respond to anyone, like, literally dragging me through the mud, like, or calling me names. But I'll respond if you're angry. Like, if you're angry, I'll respond. Or if you want to debate, I'll respond as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give my two cents. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for the construction update. It'll be up about an hour after this video. <laughs> Um, I flew the drone today and thank you so much for supporting the channel again I really apologize for dropping the ball on the sound um, of the grace interview I know that you guys are a little disappointed in that and I totally understand we are fixing the situation um, I promise that we will make strides to better um, tech you know we this channel has been around for a while and we're in a really great position to have a great relationship with the park and I do not want to drop the ball on you guys with that relationship um, moving forward. So we are purchasing 
Um, I think they're called the LaBelle mics, um, and we will have those ready for our next uh, media opportunity. Um, so thanks so much, um, and have a good one. Bye, guys.